Hi Dixons, I'm Luke Sparks, Executive Director here at Dixons. Today I'm at Dixons Trinity Chapel Town in Leeds. Absolutely delighted to be here in its new building. It's been quite a journey, journey to get to this point. As we talked about in our launch video, culture is everything at Dixons. Culture is our strategy. So today's episode kicks off perhaps our most important playlist, which is all about how we craft culture at Dixons. In particular, we want to use this playlist to show how our academies use mission mapping to craft culture. This is an approach that was inspired by Jay Altman, founder of Breakthrough New Orleans and the former CEO of First Line Schools, and also Ben Markovich, CEO of Collegiate Academies in New Orleans. Hopefully this playlist will also show how we keep things incredibly simple at Dixon's. The individual elements of our approach at Dixon's are, are, are not that revolutionary. It's the way we do those things with rigor and simplicity that others have said has led to our success. I can't stress enough the importance of keeping things simple. It's so easy to overcomplicate school leadership. Actually, school leadership is simple. It's really hard and requires courage, but it shouldn't be complex. And leaders must be willing to confront themselves and their teams about that. It's really important that we avoid initiative overload, that we focus on doing a few things really well. And that might mean not doing some really good initiatives in order to focus on the most impactful initiatives with persistence and humility. Don't really don't give up. Stick at it. And you have to be honest about your systems and processes. Are, you know, are they really that simple? At Dixon's, every year we keep trying to simplify uh, what we do. Also at Dixon's, we try to identify breakout opportunities as early as possible. And then we feed them all the resources they need. You know, it's, it, it's, it's nearly impossible to make big moves if your resources are spread too thinly, especially when we have such limited resources to start with. It's much better to bet heavily on a few breakout wins and I'll talk more about this when we look at our approach to strategic planning as part of our, uh, our growth playlist. Anyway, back to crafting culture, let's look at a recent report. So this social mobility commission report will be a central piece of understanding why we do what we do. Just consider this graph. Differences in progress rates particularly hamper poorer students' life chances, since gaps in attainment between students from high and low socioeconomic status backgrounds exist from the start of school, but they widen rather than close over the course of students' education. Thus, the promise of education as, as a great equaliser unfortunately remains unfilled. Of course, there are some challenges around, around the measurement here. For example, you know, a single test can misrepresent students' ability you know, FSM uh, can be an exasperating factor, particularly in terms of, of resilience. And, and, you know, and the DfE you know, uh, say that key stage two data you know, can have limited reli reliability. But, but nevertheless, one of the great injustices of the, of the British uh, education system is that students from low-income backgrounds are less likely to make good progress at school compared to students from better-off families. This is true of both FSM and non-FSM students. However, interestingly, the effect of FSM uh, eligibility significantly outweighs the effect of area deprivation. You know, even non-FSM students who live in the most deprived areas make more progress on average than FSM students who live in the least deprived areas. So, so area deprivation is important, but FSM eligibility is even more important. So how should we be challenging this disadvantage gap? Well, the report makes the following recommendations. You may wish to pause the video now to look through the recommendations, but clearly right at the top, both for trusts and schools, prioritising the development of a school culture of universally high expectations is critical. And it takes time to do that properly. But also, if you look at that list, there's nothing new there. 
So why aren't schools doing it? I think sometimes we talk a good game, but do we really walk the talk with real rigour every day? In great schools that are closing the achievement gap, culture is everything. And these schools share three important characteristics. The first characteristic is social norms. These schools have strong and clear norms for how people are expected to act and behave in school. What exactly people believe and how they act depends on the messages, both direct and indirect, that the leaders and others send. The second characteristic, and a really important one for us here at Dixon's, is motivation. When students have intrinsic motives for learning, when they engage not for external reward, but because they find the activity itself interesting and gratifying, they become more likely to attach meaning to their work and they will persist in the face of learning challenges. So intrinsic motivation is an absolute focus for us here at Dixon's. And the third characteristic is aspiration. And this is about focusing on keeping students' aspirations on track. And if you can do that, then students know what they need to do to achieve their aspirations and their attainment increases. Schools and policymakers in England, you know, they, they have put a lot of effort into raising aspirations over the years. Raising aspirations to try and increase achievement among our disadvantaged students. However, this is based on false assumptions about low aspirations and it's really important that we challenge that. The real challenge for disadvantaged young people is achieving their aspirations. It's not raising aspirations. The Millennium Cohort Study shows that. It shows that at a child's birth, 90% of mothers hope that they will go to university. Yet when it comes to confidence about actually achieving that aspiration, by the time their children are 14, only 53% of the poorest parents think their children will actually make it. Now it could be that university just isn't for everyone, but why is the picture so different across socio-economic classes? At the same age, 81% of the richest fifth of parents do think that their child is likely to go on to higher education. Richer families, therefore, feel they are on track to achieve their aspirations, while poorer families do not. Where students' families and friends have little or no experience of university, they do not know the route map from, for, for, you know, from, from, one world, from one world to the other. By the time their child is 14, and, and in fact earlier probably, poorer families see that their children are not on track to achieve their dreams and, and, they, and they adjust their, their, their expectations accordingly. The problem for students is not where am I going, but how do I get there? And as Loic Mendes argues, schools should focus on keeping students' aspirations on track. Working with parents, uh, and, and, and that can be parents or guardians, you know, is a highly effective way of, of, of doing so. Now, Lois shares examples of how schools are engaging with parents to help map um, the route towards their uh, children's aspirations and, 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 and argues actually for a shift from what he calls Model A to Model B. Now, most children, you know, they already have high aspirations, but they're, but they're not coupled with high expectations. And, and perhaps what, 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 what we have stuck to in education for, for too long is Model A. In Model A, the problem, student attainment is low, we believe is caused by students' aspirations being low. Therefore, we think the action is to raise students' aspirations. And therefore, we hope the outcome will be that students' attainment is then increased by raising those aspirations. But we know, but we know this, this approach doesn't work. You know, we've spent a lot of money and put a lot of effort into trying to raise aspirations, yet, yet the disadvantage gap still exists. That attainment has not been increased. Therefore, we need now to move to Model B. In Model B, we recognise that the problem is not low aspirations, the problem is low attainment, which then means that students can't achieve their high aspirations. Students do not know how to achieve their aspirations and lose faith in their ability to achieve their aspirations because their attainment is low. So we should focus on interventions that help students understand how to achieve their aspirations and those interventions which raise attainment. So I think it's important for us all to challenge the false assumptions about low aspirations and to focus on keeping aspirations on track by raising attainment, not 
focusing on raising aspirations. And for those that have watched the video with Sinek and I on our six critical questions, you will remember that at Dixon's, we absolutely focus on attainment. Attainment is what matters. So great schools that are closing the achievement gap focus on keeping aspirations on track. They focus on embedding strong social norms and they focus on promoting intrinsic motivation. And of, and of course, underpinning all of that is absolute alignment around a shared mission and a core set of values. So I hope colleagues enjoy exploring this playlist as we explore these ideas further and drill down on how we raise attainment across our schools and help young people achieve their aspirations through very high expectations. Thanks. <laughs>